Hi guys, my name is Tomasz and welcome back to our channel. Today's subject is weight change timing. Enjoy! Let's start with defining what weight change timing is. So in simple words, is the speed of our change of our body weight in relation to any given tempo. It can be music, of course, it can be slower music, it can be counting of the teacher, it can be just metronome playing in the background. It doesn't really matter what it is. Usually in ballroom dancing, we measure how much time we have for each step in beats, not in seconds. Now, why don't we do it in seconds? Because the tempo of the music can change. So we have to time our body transfer in relation to the music we hear now. It's not always the same tempo. For example, waltz can be playing at 27 bars per minute or 29 bars per minute, and that slight difference will change the tempo of your body weight transfer. Therefore, we count it in beats. There are three ways to count in ballroom dancing. We can count either in slows and quicks, which is very helpful when we have to understand how much time we have for each step, for example, when we learn the routine, right? The second way is to count in beats and bars. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. That gives us much better picture on how the routine is matching the phrasing of the song, right? So that gives us a bigger picture. Now, the third way, the most precise way is counting in half beats. So one and two and three and four and, or one and two and three and, right? Now, in that method of counting, we can pretty much analyze what happens in every half a beat. So we can make sure that our body always moves continuously and that we can do it together with the partner because we both know exactly what should happen. Understanding and practicing how each figure looks like in half beat timing will help you a lot, not just as a solo dancer, but especially in a couple when we have to do it together. You will feel there is much less bumping in between us and it's much easier to maintain the connection without the usage of the arms. Most commonly, making a step can either take two beats, one beat or half a beat, which is equivalent of a slow, quick or end. So slow takes two beats, quick takes one beat and end takes half a beat. Of course, that's in foxtrot, quick step, and tango. In waltz, we just count one, two, three. There's no slows and quicks, and usually we take one step per beat, depending on the timing of the figure. Let's start with a simple example when one step takes one beat. And we will just go forward, but of course the same can go backward, with the same can happen to the side. So I will take one step, so one full weight change from left to right foot, starting with my right foot forward, and that weight change has to take one beat, which means in one beat, I have to, starting fully on the left foot, I have to finish with my weight fully over right foot. Of course, the same can happen backward. So again, I will start on the fully on the right foot, and in one beat, I want to end up fully on the left foot. And notice that I am lifting the leg in the end. That is the simplest way to check if your weight is fully on your leg. We know that it seems like a very simple information, but to be quite honest, it, that's probably the problem number one of any beginner or medium advanced couple. That not only individually we cannot keep the timing of the weight change, but then of course when we put the couple together, that makes it very difficult. We both have different weight change timing. In the end of the day, that's exactly how we keep the harmony together in a couple. And that's exactly how we can achieve a smooth motion across the floor without any unnecessary stops or slowing downs in order to catch the music or wait for the music. So again, in the simple example of having one step in one beat, I will start again with my right foot forward. And now when I take the step, instead of counting quick, I can count one end, which is generally one full beat or two half beats. 
which means that in the first half of the beat, I will move my weight exactly to the middle, to the split weight between my feet. And that's exactly when I will place my right foot on the floor. So I will go one. So I place my foot exactly when my weight is in the middle. And now I will have half a beat to move my weight exactly on the right foot and collect my left foot. And it's very important to imagine that on one or one end, we are already exactly in that place with our body. So on one, we exactly in split weight and on end, we are exactly on the, uh, fully on the weight. It's very easy to make the mistake of counting one and that's when we start the action instead of already being there. So in a very simple, again, example, this will be the correct way of doing one and, and a bad way of doing it, one and. Of course, another bad way of doing it to do it earlier than we should, right? So first we step and then do one, then we step and then do end. So one was exactly with the music or with the tempo, one was late and one was early. So just remember, always we start the action and then arrive to the moment. Continue the action and then arrive on to the point in time or tempo. So now let's take a slow as an example. So we'll take one step in a slow timing or slow tempo, which takes two beats. So again, I will start with my right foot forward. And now instead of having one quick, I will have one slow. So generally I have twice as much time to do that step. Now, to make that step smoothly, I can do two things. First, I can make that step bigger because it will take more time. So it will feel more natural to me to do it nicely. Or I can make that step slower because again, it will take more time to do the same step. So for example, I will start with my right foot forward and now during the slow, which is two beats, I will take one step and one, two. Of course, I can also count in half beat timing. So instead of counting one, two, I can count one and two end, which means I will start on one, actually before one, to already move on one, and I will finish on two end. I have to do it smoothly throughout the whole step. So I will go one and two end. In order to do it smoothly, you just have to break it apart into checkpoints and understand what happens in each stage. So as simple as that, we can say that on one, I'm starting to move forward. On end, I'm already in the middle of the two feet. On two, I'm starting to transfer towards my front foot. And on end, I arrive fully on the weight with my foot collected. In that way, you can make sure that you're doing it smoothly. Very, very often, especially with the slow steps, we see that couples or dancers do it too early and too quick, like that. One and two end. So you can see that on two and end, I had to physically wait in spot. And that's something we want to avoid, especially if we're trying to connect two steps in a row. As a simple exercise, when we two, take two steps in a row, we will first do two quick steps in a row and then two slow steps in a row. And the purpose of the exercise is to learn how to transfer your weight continuously without any acceleration deceleration, just continuously and smoothly from A to B and never stopping and not arriving early or late. Right? So physically trying to maintain the same checkpoints all the way through. We'll start with the easier one. So two steps, each taking one beat. So starting with the right foot forward, I'll go one and two end. As you see on one, I was in the middle of the weight. On end, I arrived fully on the leg. On two, I was in the between my feet. And on end, I was again fully on the leg. Hopefully I did it very smoothly. A bad way to do it would be one and two end or one and two end. So you can clearly see that the weight transfer was not smooth. And regardless of the dance, even in tango that seems the most sharp, the weight change transfer is always smooth. It can be stopping sometimes to the point, so staccato action, but generally when we have most of the figures, the weight doesn't stop and it continues smoothly. So now let's do the same exercise with two slow steps. Now it will be harder because not only will it be slower, but I have to be more precise with my timing because very easily I can go one and two and three and four and 
that would be very bad way to do it, which we very often see. Now, what we should be doing is we should time it correctly and never stop from A to B. So we'll go one and two and three and four and. Of course, I can do the same backward. One and two and three and four and. That's why it's so crucial to know exact stages of your weight change transfer in every figure you have. Now, there is a big chance that if you don't know exactly the stages in particular figure, you won't dance it too well. And it's as important to know it as it is to do it. It's very difficult to do it without the knowledge. So as a student, try to be very curious about the subject and about the weight change transfer, because the more questions you ask, the more chances you have to actually do the figures correctly and to understand what are exact stages of that figure. So the last thing we will do is we will cover the how to make a step in half beat. When we do it in a half beat, so on end, we generally don't need the checkpoint in between because it is so fast. So when we do it, we literally just want to start whenever we start and finish on end fully on the leg. So it's end. Now it's important to know that it's not when we place the foot on end, it's when we have to be already fully on the weight on end. And that's where many dancers have problems, because instead of going one end, they tend to do one end. And because their weight is still in the middle, not on the foot, the next step will be late, and the next step will be late. And that will cause a domino effect until it's stopped, hopefully as soon as possible. Of course, any information here can be used in any of the dances, forward, backward and sideways, it doesn't really matter. Please remember that on top of the weight change transfer, we also have to understand the rotation timing, sway timing, rise and fall timing, and on top there will come also dynamics. The weight change timing doesn't have anything to do with dynamics, because you can be doing that very smoothly and continuously, and you can do that continuously with acceleration and deceleration. This is not the same thing. What we talk today about is how to make it smooth and continuous and fit the rhythm. A very good way to practice it would be to sit down yourself or with your partner and try to go through entire routine and understand, first of all, the timing of your figures, right? So know if the, for example, running spin turn in walls has the timing one and two, three, or one, two and three, or one, two, three and. Anything is possible, but it's very important to have the same timing between us in a couple. Now, the second thing what we have to do is once we know the timing of the steps, go through the half beat timing and understand what happens in every single half beat through the whole routine. If you've never done it, you might discover that the first time you do it, your partner has a very different idea of what the timing of your routine is. Now, that's not always the case. Some people are naturally very good with memorizing the timing and understanding how it works. But from our experience, that's a very small percentage of the population of our students. In majority, that includes us. We have to learn, break it apart and understand how to do it. In the beginning, the slower, the better, because that will really make you understand what are the stages. If you're going to the full tempo of the music straight away, there's a very good chance that you won't notice if you did it correctly or not. So try to first break it apart, then do it slowly, continuously, and then slowly, slowly, slowly build it up to full tempo. It's a very tricky thing to do a new information straight up with the music. Please remember that if you don't agree with your partner on specific timing, it's best to just take it to the teacher and they will pick the best timing for you. And second thing, it's very helpful if you are in a couple that you can watch each other do it because it's much easier to spot the difference than the to feel the difference. And remember, dancing is judged by judges looking at you, not by feeling how you dance. So it's very important that it's not just the feeling that is correct, but it's the visual results we want in order to get your results better on competition. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching again. As always, if you have any comments, please put them in the comment section below. If you like the video, hit the like button and we will see you in the next one. Bye bye.